For every Christian that has a desire to be married, I'm sure the thought of dating has crossed their mind. It must be nice to have someone you love and for that person to love you back and to have the opportunity to live life with them, to go out, have some coffee, maybe watch a movie or learn something new together. Dating could be a very good thing. In it, you can potentially find your future spouse. And at the same time, dating can be a harmful and potentially destructive thing if done incorrectly. The Christian who enters into a dating relationship with someone must be cautious as they move their relationship forward. And before I continue, I do want to mention that dating does look different for a lot of people. But regardless of the relationship, these four guidelines should be applied to everyone if they want to date God's way. So let's get started. Guideline number one, set up physical boundaries. Song of Songs, chapter eight, verse four. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, do not stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. These words were spoken by the lover of King Solomon. This woman was known as the Shulamite, and her and King Solomon were madly in love with each other, and they shared passionate and intense affection. And in her love, she said to the people, do not stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. And what she was saying here is that timing must be considered when it comes to romance. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. You see, when it comes to the Bible, any sexual act that is outside the context of marriage is sexual immorality. And this passage tells us that it's God's will for us to abstain or stay away from sexual immorality. And fornication, or in other words, sex outside of marriage, is sexual immorality. So if you're dating, please note that you must do everything in your power to keep your relationship holy and undefiled before God. And this can be difficult, because if you really love your boyfriend or girlfriend, you'll want to be close. And if you're not careful, a touch can turn into an embrace, and that embrace can lead to you and your partner committing sexual immorality, which is the very thing God wants you to run away from. So what are you allowed to do? Should you be allowed to hug, hold hands, kiss? Are you allowed to be alone together in your car? Consider Romans chapter 13, verse 14. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. This passage tells us to get rid of anything in our lives that makes it easier for us to sin. Look, I'm not gonna tell you what you should and shouldn't do because every dating relationship is different with their own unique strengths and struggles. But what I will tell you is that it would be wise and advantageous for you and your future marriage if you keep yourselves untainted from the guilt and shame that comes with embracing sin. So don't position yourselves in a place that makes it easier for you to sin. Don't awaken love until it pleases, and it pleases most when you do things God's way and in God's time. Guideline number two, check their pace. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness? Now, this yoke is not an egg yoke. This yoke is a piece of wood that connects two oxen so that both of them can carry a load. Because both oxen are connected, it's important that both be about the same size and have similar levels of strength. Because if one ox is weaker than the other, the load they pull won't be able to move forward. Actually, they'll go around in circles as opposed to successfully carrying the weight that they were supposed to. Now, we can draw many truths from this passage. For one, God says we as believers shouldn't be unequally yoked or connected with unbelievers. So in the context of dating, Christians should not be dating or romantically connected with people who aren't Christian. Why? Because one person will want to follow God and the other won't, which will lead to one of two things. Either the Christian will be hindered in the relationship as they pursue God, or it will lead to compromise. Another point I'd like to add is to consider this passage even if both the boyfriend and girlfriend are Christian. You see, some people call themselves Christian, but they aren't really that serious or they lack a real relationship with God. And these kinds of Christians can be more of a weight or a hindrance in a romantic relationship 
and can possibly lead to being unequally yoked, spiritually speaking. And this would look like one person in the relationship pursuing God and taking steps to move forward in their faith, while the other one is indifferent or doesn't make it a goal to grow further. So when you're dating, I would encourage you to pay attention to both of your paces when it comes to following God. Are you moving in a godly direction that you both want at a pace that you both desire? Guideline number three, live life, not fantasy. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3-4 to four. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. For people who think the Christian life is always full of happy smiles and warm hugs, you're wrong. The Bible describes the Christian walk as being likened to war with its fair share of struggles, hardships, casualties, and losses. So as you're dating, you must remember that real life can be difficult. And I think sometimes when people date, people like escaping reality and they go to the movie theater and they go on these expensive dates at fancy restaurants and they go to amusement parks and that's fine and all. But dating should also include living real life together. Anyone can be in a good mood when you're doing fun hikes and staring at each other's eyes at a candlelit dinner in a restaurant. But how does your partner respond when there's bills to pay, money to manage, or rooms to clean? And how about if they have a family to take care of and responsibilities to prioritize? Now, I'm not saying that those fancy nights out are wrong. <laughs> no, date nights are good and can promote communication and intimacy. But real life doesn't look like that every day. Life goes on and it requires a lot of hard work, conflict management, effective communication, and acts of service that can be inconvenient at the moment. So for some dates, try making a meal, or try doing your homework together, or clean, or do laundry. The idea is to look at your schedule and see what you regularly do, and then do those things together so you can see what living life looks like with them at your side. Guideline number four, love God more than your partner. Mark chapter 12, verse 30. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. This thought is one that every Christian must always have at the forefront of their mind, and it's, I must love God more than everyone and everything, and that includes my significant other. Here's the thing. Love looks very different for everyone. People are unique. Therefore, the love relationships that they share with others will also be unique. So while I can give you guidelines on what you can do, God must lead your relationship, not me. If you're dating now, you should be praying more and reading the Bible more to see if this person that you're seeing is someone that God wants for you. Look, you need God in your relationship. You need his help, his leading, his wisdom, his encouragement, and his support. God is the God of love, and if you aren't connected to him, you won't be able to love your partner the way that he wants you to. It's God and his word that will correct you, and he may actually bring you to a place where you realize that you need a breakup. So remember, God is your God and the king of your life. If he tells you to love, then love. If he tells you to serve, serve. And if he tells you to let go, then let go. Either way, love God more and follow him as he leads you according to his spirit and his word. So, big topic, Christian dating. So whether you're dating now or have plans to date in the future, remember these four guidelines. Guideline number one, set up physical boundaries. Guideline number two, check their pace, yours and your partner's. Guideline number three, live life not fantasy. And guideline number four, love God more than your partner. All right, so we hope this helps. And in all your dating or future dating, never forget, Jesus loves you. <laughs>